know? And, um, and so he went like that. And for three days, uh, I didn't hear from him. Um, you know, so imagine the mental battle uh, that, you, uh, that you have to, um, to, to lead at that moment. Um, and then we received some news from, uh, from him, and uh, it was um, some emails from his captors, but also some pictures. And, um, and I saw the photographs, uh, they were downloaded in, on the internet, and I saw two things at the same time. Uh, it was a picture of him, and he had a gun pointed at his head, and he had um, a shackle in his hands. And with, in one of the pictures, he was uh, giving the finger, you know. And the other picture, he was doing the V for victory. And I knew, I mean, I think, you know, you can imagine that situation if you, if you, you know, you're held by Al-Qaeda, you know, they just had done, they just done 9-11. Uh, you know what they're capable of doing. Um, you know, having had the strength at that moment and, you know, the intelligence of showing a sign of his mind frame, of his spirit at that moment, is probably what, you know, keeps me, um, you know, um, I mean, help me survive after because um, I, I knew he was thinking exactly the same thing I, I was. So obviously when I received the pictures, you know, I felt even more determined. And, um, and, um, and then, you know, we received some, some more photographs three days later, and this time also he was, you know, he gave a sign. And, and um, so I knew that, you know, things were very, very difficult over there, but he, even if he were to, um, you know, if, I didn't think of him dying at that moment. I, I, I thought of us dying. You know, for me, the one scenario, I, I mean, I knew that, you know, it was a life and death situation, but for me, the one thing that I didn't, um, you know, think about is what, that one of us would be, would, you know, would be alive and the other one would die. That was the, the, you know, the one scenario that I couldn't really deal with. But, um, but you know, but I felt also that, you know, if we if we have to to die for that, then it's worth it. And uh, I don't know. There's a there's a French um, writer who said, uh, you know, dying for ideas is an excellent idea, but you know, you might die from not not, not having it. You know, it's very complicated French thing. But uh, you know, what it means what it means is that you know, you you uh, yes, you you are you know, you are put in a situation in your life where all your you know your your convictions, your faith, everything that makes you who you are is put into trial. And certainly that was that. So, um, uh, but uh, another five weeks passed before uh, I knew anything. And um, after those pictures of Danny, you know, there was a lot of fake emails, there was a lot of, you know, uh, um, but there was no, uh, um, I, you know, identified news from him. So it lasted for five weeks. And that's a very, very long time. And, you know, so we went, you know, there was a lot of progress because of, you know, because of the FBI going through, uh, going beyond the limits and limitations, you know, we did, you know, advance very, very well. But I mean, also, um, you know, I'm not going to get into uh, details, but it's, um, it's a very complicated, simple yet complicated uh, organization, Al-Qaeda, that functions with cells that are very independent one from the other. So even if you catch one cell, it doesn't mean that they'll know what the next one is doing and et cetera, et cetera. So it made it very, very difficult to try to find any. Um, after five weeks, I, um, you know, we were still uh, waiting and investigating and everybody was, you know, extremely exhausted and we were getting to the point where we felt, you know, this is, this can go on. And um, one night I, um, um, I was in the, that safe house and, and uh, the people who were leading this investigation are very, very tough people. I mean, they are people who are dealing with kidnappings all the time and, and terrorism and, and um, and they came, uh, they left, first of all, and I knew something was wrong. Uh, and then they came back, and they were all crying. And so they told me, you know, they, he died. And, um, you know, I didn't want to believe it at first. I thought, you know, it was, you know, well, I just didn't want to believe it. And, and uh, then they told me uh, that they saw a video of, uh, of, uh, of his killing. And they told me how he died. And um, at that moment, I... Um, there was a lot of guards outside the house and uh, with weapons and AK-47s and things. My first reaction was to run outside of the house and, and I took a gun. And you know, and that's probably like, you know, it's, uh, you know, the one moment in my life that taught me most because um, when I held that gun, I was pregnant, you know, I, I, um, I knew so intimately that it was easy to use a gun against somebody who's hurt you, 
It's not that difficult. Killing someone who's hurt you that bad is nothing. Um, you know, and I, um, I knew that uh, Danny in, uh, in, the, in this video that they had seen had mentioned, um, you know, he was meant to read a statement from, from, from his captors that said his mother was Jewish and his uh, father was Jewish and he was Jewish. But then he added some anecdote about his, um, a street in Israel being named after his grandfather. And I knew, obviously, that you know they couldn't know that, and they, it was a, you know it was willingly that he gave that information so that we knew that that was his, you know obviously uh, the, the means of communication was very you know, uh, but he knew that they would find it and in, you know like another reason to kill him. But for us, it would mean that uh, um, you know he'll find a. Uh, a way to say, you know, I might die, but you know, you can you can kill me, you can kill a man, but you can't kill, you can hold a spirit. A strong spirit is impossible to kill, and that's what he said, and um, through these words. And so what I did is when I uh, was holding that gun, I understood, you know, the real, I think, you know, the true meaning of, you know, what dialogue is about and tolerance is about, um, because. Again, as I said, you know, revenge is such a natural thing at that moment, particularly if you, you know, obviously very angry and so legitimately angry. But I knew the only act of courage then was to put that this gun, put down this gun, and start, um, you know, uh, acting on what brought us together. Um, and I'm not talking about the placebo effect. And I'm not talking. I knew it was going to be so difficult. It seemed to me like a mountain at that moment to not act on my revenge or make my revenge. You know, um, I mean, I basically, to make it short, is you know, you, I knew I could only fight terrorists with what they thought they had taken away from me. You know, human empathy, courage, desire, um, ability to love, ability to share, all of that. Um, you know, that's that's what that's the only tools I had against them, and uh, but that was also the most efficient tool because all all of that I knew they didn't have. So I put down the gun, and, uh, and I think that, that's my one big act of courage. We, uh, we were living in Bombay with Danny. I was in Karachi with, you know, pregnant, and I didn't know what to do. So then I really, you know, I was, I was pregnant, so I said, you know, I realized for me, like, I, I was not going to give birth to someone without giving hope. And if I couldn't find hope, you know, then, then, then what was the point of bringing a child to the world? So the first thing I did is, uh, well, first of all, bring him to the world, actually, and um, I did that. And but it was my pledge, you know, that was my uh, commitment. It's, um, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, if I, if I had lost that, then the terrorists would have won, would have won. Like if I had lost hope, if I had lost empathy, if I, you know, I, I, I remained a journalist. You know, there was no question in my mind that I was going to keep being a journalist. Um, so I think my big, you know, achievement in that is that I think, you know, everything that was um, expected to be taken away from me hasn't been, and um, and that has been, uh, you know, the, the, obviously it wasn't uh, on its own. I mean, it has been, a, it's been a big, big struggle, but um, but I do find now, uh, six years after that, I think the power of empathy and the power of um, the good. <clears throat> actually prevail, prevails. Um, 